Growing up watching The Proud Family, I always loved how the Gross Sisters were so funny, but I always wondered, why are they blue? Yeah, we ain't scared of no 5 0, and I ain't scared of no ashy bully. <gasps> if it wasn't for Tony, What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you for tuning back in. Today, I'm back with another Proud Family video, character breakdown, or should I say characters breakdown, this time on the Gross Sisters. And I figured what better shirt to wear than this one when talking about the blue Gross Sisters. And I gotta say, I wanna ask y'all, as a child, or even as a teenager, whenever you watched the show originally, did y'all ever make the connection of why they were blue? And this is going to go into a deeper colorism conversation. And I know a lot of y'all like, oh, it's just a cartoon, just an animation, people do too much. But, like I said, when you look at things as an adult compared to when you was just a child watching it, it's just like whatever, it's animation, it don't really matter. You look at it in a different perspective. The Gross Sisters. Of course. Now. As y'all can see, my cat Kiwi wanted to join in the conversation. Did you ever make the connection that they were blue because they were ashy? And it was the whole storyline or the whole gag of them being ashy. They can't afford lotion. But their nicknames were parodies of lotion. Like Nubia, Nivea, Olay, Neutrogena. Did you ever make that connection? And honestly, as a child, it was just like whatever. Like, you know, what are we going to do? Like protest against them being blue like oh make them brown skin nobody was thinking about that back then but as an adult watching it and i see a lot of discussion about this too you know when all these different problems with the reboot started coming out people started looking at the old show like why did they make the gross sisters blue because you could obviously tell they were supposed to be black but they made them blue but before we even get into that deep conversation let's just talk about the gross sisters as a whole and break it down right now, Nubia was the mouthpiece. She was the talkative one. The other two didn't talk. Olay was the big one, like the monstrous looking one. She was the muscle of the group. Gina was the short one, the small one. She was the one that would like collect the money. And they had like a whole system. They were a unit together. And when you look at certain episodes, you realize how strong they were together, but how weak they were separated. You know the drill, Nubia? we made it clear that we are not intimidated by you and Lucky Charms over there. Besides them being the bullies of the show and of the, you know, of all the kids and the friend groups, they were actually kind of funny to me. Like, although they were supposed to be the dark-skinned, ashy bullies, I'm gonna talk about that later. They brought a comedic relief to the show that was, like, refreshing. You know, Oscar, like I always say, was supposed to be the goofy, rambunctious one. Like, all the comedy gags were supposed to be with Oscar. But the Gross Sisters, especially Nubia, since she was the one that talked, she always brought a sarcasm and a wit that just, like, it gave the show an extra punch. Unless you can spell C-A-S-H money, the Gross Sisters can't fix nothing. Nope. Don't make us run up in this mug. Is this all y'all got? Oh, see, y'all gonna make us just start looking for a job. And also with certain episodes, like when Penny threw a party, and her friends ditched her for La Cienica's because La Cienica was supposed to have all these amazing things and all these better people at her party or whatever. The gross sister showed up and Penny was kind of like uh, distraught about it. I was like, damn, like the gross sisters were the bullies. But then when you think about it, she still had a good time with them. They still have fun. They were more loyal to her than her real friends. It's times like this that you discover who your real friends are. And you could tell as a whole, they were smart. The gross sisters were smart. But for some reason, they took on bullying and, you know, intimidating people out of their money for whatever reason. And that's a backstory that was never really explained, right? They never really explained why. <laughs> they never, right, Kiwi? They never really explained why did they make the Gross Sisters so angry and so, you know, vicious and aggressive? Like, what was the backstory? And another thing I really want to bring up is with Olay, the big, biggest one of the group, the most aggressive one, the muscle of the group. You could tell she had a soft spot too, but for whatever reason, she felt pressured into becoming a part of that trio, bullying people, bullying other kids out their money. Because when they gave her the makeover, because she wanted, you know, to step out of that bully role, she actually looked 
real nice. It really makes you wonder, why were they this way? Why did the writers make them this way? And again, why are they blue? Wow, that's, that's a great question. Because back then you had shows like Doug, where the characters were different colors. You know, you had Doug who was like light, then you had orange and blue and green characters. So in that world, in that animation, it made sense. But for the Proud family, it's supposed to be about, you know, a black family in a black neighborhood. You have different ethnicities. You got the Gro sisters who are just a dark shade of blue. And they have on dark overalls and just their whole vibe was just dark energy, aggressive energy, which I'm going to talk about soon. It makes you wonder, what was the thought process behind that? Do I look like I need a makeover? Uh, no. When I look back at it, it makes you think maybe they did this because they felt like they had no choice. But when you look at their family, the mother, the father, they came from a well-to-do family. They had a nice house or whatever. And it was the whole thing of them working in the sun or they always had to work because when they switched families with La Cienega, the gross sister's parents made La Cienega go right to work, meaning that that's what the gross sisters always had to do, work in the sun and do this or whatever. And that's the whole thing of them being blue, being ashy because they worked in the sun. They couldn't afford lotion, but they lived in the house. Like, what was that whole thing about? I really need them to really explain that. That was never really explained. It was just something that we were just supposed to get or just go along with just because. Like really, what was that about? That they couldn't afford lotion, that they were so ashy that they turned blue, but nobody else in the neighborhood, nobody else in the proud family world experienced that but the gross sisters. And then in a way that turned them into vicious bullies that, <laughs> right? Even Kiwi's confused. Like what was that about? Can somebody please make it make sense? Going into the whole colorism conversation with the Gross Sisters, this is where it could get deep. But I need y'all to follow me. Some of y'all, I feel like, are going to understand what I'm saying. Other ones are going to be like, hmm, huh? Let me explain. There's a common joke. There's a common hyperbole where I remember, especially people of darker skin tones, whether you use a school or whatever, got bullied for being dark skin. That's a part of colorism, right? Discrimination against dark skin people most of the time. One major joke I remember hearing all the time with dark skin people was like, oh, he's so dark, he look blue. She's so dark, she look purple. Like somebody's skin is so dark that they don't even look, you know, black. Like purple and blue, like they're like a whole nother shade, an impossible shade of a human pigment. That's how dark they are. Some people will understand, some people won't. Another thing I remember is like when the teacher would turn the light off and some people of lighter skin would be like, where's such and such? Where's such and such? And those people would be darker. Like, oh, the teacher turned their lights off. Where did such and such go? Like, they're so black, they're so dark that they disappeared into the darkness when the teacher turned the light off. Like that type of, like I remember this. All these different type of things, right? So when you, and I'm pretty sure the writers who were black, especially back then, they knew of these things, but they incorporated in different ways. Because to use the whole thing of, oh, they're ashy, their names are parodies of like popular lotion brands. Why? It's like, okay, I know the whole thing of saying somebody is so dark that they look blue or purple, and y'all made them overly aggressive. Nasty, mean, bullies. Like, that's another bad representation of dark skinned women or young girls in the show. But some people won't even make the connection because they're blue, which is a unnatural human skin pigment, skin tone. It almost made them like the monsters. Not even like the villains, they're like monsters. They're so unnatural, they're so aggressive, they're so other that. Their skin is not even the same color as a regular human. It may be a deep analysis and some of y'all still might be like, mm, but if you get it, you get it. So if you really think about it, the gross sisters were lumped into that thing of black women, especially of darker skin tones, this time purple blue skin tones, not being represented well in this show. 
Dijanae, overly ghetto, overly ratchet. Maya, her wokeness, which is almost like hypocrisy. And then in the reboot, I realized watching the two seasons of this new Proud Family Loud and Prouder, the grossnesses are barely in it. Like in the last, the original series, they popped up every two, three episodes. But in this one, I feel like they forgot about them and they just added them wherever they saw like an opportunity to, but they barely, rarely in this one. And when you first get introduced to the Gross Sisters in the reboot, in the first episode, what are they doing? They're rapping. So it's kind of like playing into that stereotype of like they're aggressive, they're hardcore, they're bullies. And their glow up was now they can rap. And it's like, hmm. The Gross Sisters change too. They look meaner. And ashier. Hands up, yep, give me all your cash. No fuss, just put it in the bag. And I gotta be honest, like I said, I do enjoy the Gross Sisters. I enjoy the whole entire thing with them and like the sarcasm and the wit and that whole entire arc. But I wanna see more from them. In this new reboot, in the new season, I wanna see a backstory from the Gross Sisters. I wanna see their home life. Another thing I wanna talk about is remember when Penny was so bad or whatever? She became disobedient and defiant. She became blue, like one of the girl sisters. Like, okay, now all of a sudden you're saying Penny is ashy? When she became nasty and aggressive and mean, she became blue, like the girl sisters. They didn't mention nothing about her being ashy or needing lotion. So you see how there's a disconnect? You see how there's like a inconsistency with the different storylines and plots and gags? Then you have the name Gross Sisters. Any kind of name they could have been. Y'all know what gross means. So you have all of this on them. Overly aggressive, mean, bullies. So dark that they're blue. But the producers and writers say they're ashy. Their name, gross. I mean, at this point, you got to put two and two together. But I really want to know y'all thoughts on the Gross Sisters. What did y'all think about the Gross Sisters in the original? What do y'all think about them in the reboot? Or the lack thereof and what would y'all like to see for the gross sister storyline like me personally like i said i want to see a backstory what made them this way i want to see them in their real skin tone since the blueness is supposed to be ashiness how do they look with a normal skin tone wouldn't that be a nice fun episode like i say with mostly all the characters i did character breakdowns of there's so much we know of the characters but there's so much more we don't Especially when they're not the protagonists and they're the side characters. Because, you know, the girl sisters are like the side characters, the villains, the bullies of the show. But the way they portrayed them, the way they presented them to us back then and even now, I feel like they deserve a backstory episode. And if it's done right, if it's executed right, I feel like it would give the writers and the producers some redemption and be like, oh, wow, okay. But you know, they haven't proven they can do that so far. But let's see what they do with season three. So anyways, guys, that was my thoughts on the Gross Sisters from the Proud Family and what I would like to see and my thoughts on their character development. I really want to know below, what did y'all think of the Gross Sisters? What do you think of their character? What do you think of that storyline, the blueness, the aggressiveness, the gross name? And what do you think of the whole colorism argument with how they made them so aggressive and so dark that they're blue and that they're almost like otherworldly, monstrous. They don't even deserve to have a normal skin tone. That's how aggressive and mean and nasty they are, which is deep rooted in the colorism argument of dark skinned women being aggressive and too masculine. Let's really get this discussion started because I feel like this could be one of the most interesting ones. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Thank you for watching and listening. I'll see y'all in the next video.